Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to make simple hit detection in Pico 8. I know there's a couple other videos on YouTube that go over how to do hit detection for other processes, but I don't really think that there's one that really goes in depth into how it really works. Uh, and yeah, I've noticed in a couple of videos there's people talking about how you have to minus one here and they can't really explain why because it's kind of complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain not exactly how that works from a technical standpoint, but I'm going to break it down and make it as simple as possible to understand. So the first thing we need to do is set up a program structure. So uh, I'm just going to quickly drop in a comment here and let's set up the beginning of the program. Okay, so now that our program is set up with the basic functions, um, we just want to do a little bit of debugging. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to get our math right. So before we go into doing hit detection with sprites, which is our ultimate goal, we want to make sure that all the math is going to be perfect. And we can do that by drawing rectangles to the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a rectangle that's going to be a player and we're also going to have to give that a few variables. So uh, I'm just going to initialize a player and then draw that to the screen. Okay, now when we do a rect fill, what we're going to need to do is provide it the um, information that makes up a box. And we don't actually have that and we're going to want to do this quite a bit. So instead of just doing this here uh, and then having to copy it and clean it up later and all that, we're going to create a utility function to help us out with that. So I'm just going to open up another tab and we're going to call this utility. And I'm just going to set up a function here. Um, I'm going to go through typing it out, and then afterwards I'll explain, well, you know what, I'll go through it. Uh, okay, so let's start this off here. We're going to create a function that's going to return us the information of the box that surrounds a sprite. Which means we're going to want to give it as many variables as a sprite takes that we need to be able to get that which means we can avoid the flips, we can avoid the sprite number. We just need to know where it is and how big it is. We can do that by getting the x and the y and the width and the height. And we want to be able to use this um, without typing in the width and the height and still having that default to 1. So I'm just going to set that up here at the beginning. And now that we've got that, uh, we just want to create the box. And we're going to do that by storing the variables in a table. So let's just create an empty table. And then we're going to want to store the x and the y, both the starting position and the ending position. So I'm going to store an x1, a y1, and then a 2 and a 2. And the first ones are just going to equal the sprite. And now the ending position is going to be where the sprite ends. And this is where we're going to get into some of the um, instructional bits here. So before we finish this off, uh, I'm just going to quickly throw in a return here. Before we finish this, we're actually just going to draw one thing to the screen here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a single pixel. Um, so let's just draw it where the player is. I'm going to make it red. And because we're drawing one pixel, we draw the start and the end position is the same point. Now you can see we have one pixel on the screen that's red. And this is where the instructional bit sort of happens, because you can see one pixel is the same point. So now if we add one to the end point, 
we have a 2 by 2 square, which means if we add the full 8 to this, we're going to have a 9 by 9 square, which is why you have to minus 1. Yeah, I, I can't really explain it any better than that. I hope that makes sense. So now that we know that, we know what we need to do here. We need to add the 8 and then subtract the 1. You might think we need to minus 1 for every additional 8 we add, but we actually don't. Because the sprite starts from that 0 and then builds outward, there's only ever that initial instance of needing the extra negative 1. Alright, so now this function is going to return us a full box, and we can use this to store the box for our player. So, we're going to do that in the update function, because the update function is going to get called before the draw, and that's just going to allow us to keep things separate and allow us to draw in any order we want. And our player sprite for now is just going to be a one by one, so we can actually leave that blank. And then we have to throw those variables into here. So we call that pbox. So and now you can see we have an eight by eight box here for the player. I'm just going to add one more for a test box, and that's the one that we're going to do collisions with. Make sure you spell these right, or else that's not going to work. And we're going to add the box in here as well. And you can see how making this function makes this really easy for us. And that's also going to be 1, 1. And then we can just come down here, and we can copy our draw function. We want to draw this underneath the player. Just comment this as well, quick. Then we should just be able to replace every T or every P with a T. Oh, and these plus ones should not be here. All right, now we're just going to quickly give the player some movement and make sure that these boxes are actually the right size. So we can do that really quick after we assign the boxes here in the update. And there is a much better way to do this, but uh, just to keep things simple for now, I'm going to do it this way. Now you can see we can move our player. I'm just going to replace these with button P. That's going to make it easier for us to tell exactly how big these are. So if we move our box all the way down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that's perfect. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And you can also see, uh, if we come up here, we can easily take our player box width of 1, height of 2, and now our player has a height of 2. And if we test it out here, we know that the top 8 are correct. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you only need to minus the 1 because of how the sprite box starts. And that's going to work perfectly. And this is actually the size of our player. He's going to be too tall. So we wanted to make sure this math is going to be perfect for every use case. Now that we've got all of that out of the way, let's quickly add in, well, I say quickly, this is actually the most complicated part. Now we need to add in our hit detection. Oh my god. And we are going to do that after the player moves. 
And what that's going to do is it's going to, as soon as the player moves, it's going to tell us whether or not we've hit something, which is going to allow us, when we move this into a game setting, to make any changes we need in that same frame before a draw call is made. And that's going to be very important. So you always want to call the detection after the movement. So we're going to detect hits here, but we actually want to create another utility function for this, because this is something we're going to want to copy around and use everywhere. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to write it out from scratch, just so you can get a little better understanding of how this works. But definitely, I do not recommend writing this from scratch every time. So we have a hit detect, and it's going to take two boxes. And this is going to calculate hit detection based on axis intersections. So we're going to create a local bool. I'm just going to return that. And then out here, we're going to go initialize another variable up here, pt hit. Set that up here. And once we have everything worked out, this should return us what we want. So what we need to do here is we need to check whether or not any of the points in box one are intersecting on two axes, the y and the x axes, at any one time on box two, and vice versa. So we're going to start with the x. Now. We're going to use something called min and max. These are two functions. So what we're going to do here first is the max. And what this is going to do is it's going to check to see which point is bigger, whether it's box 1, x1, or box 1, x2. Now, you'd think this would always return box 1, x2, but there are going to be situations in which, say our sprite is off screen and we're doing wrapping, we're going to have two instances of our box. And this isn't actually something that we really need to worry about, but it's just part of this whole detection. It, that means the sprite could be coming in from the opposite side. So when we're actually dealing with the detection, it could end up being that the max value is box one x one it, it's this whole stuff it, hit detection is very complicated but I'm, I'm doing my best to break this down here all you need to know is this is going to find out which of these two values is more important to our calculation whether it's x1 or x2 and we want to know which of those values we want to know if the more important value is greater than the minimum of the second box So basically, is the x-axis of box 1 intersecting with the x-axis of box 2 from this direction? Then we want to throw in an AND, and we're going to reverse it. Now, there are going to be hit detection systems that you see that don't do greater than equals. They're just going to do greater than or less than. And that's actually because of the math that we're doing over here when it comes to, actually, it's right up here, when it comes to our sprite box. When people calculate the sprite boxes, sometimes what they'll do is they won't minus this one, and then they'll just do greater than or less than. So what that's going to do is it's going to truncate the top values 
which is going to ignore those extra points that don't need to exist. But what we're trying to do here is we're trying to set up a sprite box. Because say we're trying to make a game that only uses geometry, we want to make sure our box is perfectly the right size. And when we're using the width and the height of a sprite, that's going to be 8 by 8 and we don't want it to be bigger than the underlying sprite. So we need to minus that one, because this is going to represent the box for a sprite. We can't say for some reason we need to show a flash on the screen, like say a sprite gets hit or something, and we want to flash a square over top of that. We need to be the right size to be able to do something like that, so we just need to keep our math consistent. If we're going to minus one, we need to make sure that we can equal that outer value. We're also going to check for our y intersections now, which is the same thing, so I'm just going to quickly type that in here. Since we've already done it once, it's just the y of the boxes. Alright, and if our code makes it here, we know that we have gotten a intersection on both the y and the x axes in some way or another. Which means we have a hit, so we're just going to set hit to equal true. Which is going to return true instead of false. But because our local is set at the beginning of the function, it's always going to start as false and only return a true if we're intersecting. So if we're not intersecting, we actually don't have to do any extra instruction. It's already false. We just return that. And so uh, PT hit should now actually turn true when these boxes are intersecting. So we're just going to test that by coming down here and drawing on top. Actually, no, let's just go right into this. We're drawing the test box here, so we want to turn the test box yellow when we intersect. So down here, we're setting it to red. What we're actually going to do is we're going to throw in a little statement here. So throw in a bracket and go PT hit, and that's going to check to see if PT hit is true, because when you throw in a little branch like this, it's like a little if statement. And if it returns true, we're actually going to set it to, I believe, 10 or 8, which is going to be the red. And let me check here. Yes, yellow is 10. So if I move the character here into the other box, oh, we have a bit of uh, we have a bit of an issue there. Let me let me make sure I typed in the math right. I did not. There we go. All right, so now <laughs> when we move the player into this other box, no matter where we go, as long as we have a single pixel inside that box, we are detecting a hit from any direction, no matter what size we are. And that is pretty much it. That is how to do hit detection in Pico 8. Hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, if you care to stick around to watch the video that I utilize this hit detection in, it should be coming out fairly soon. Hope you have a great day.